by the squeeze something. Okay, we are going to find the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial over n to the nth power. Of course, let's do the check, plugging infinity into all the n's. On the top, we will have infinity factorial when n is a whole number. And we will get infinity on the top. And then on the bottom, of course, we also end up with infinity because that's infinity to the infinity's power. This is an infinity over infinity situation. And we know that's indeterminate, right? So that means we have to do more work. And in this case, we cannot use L'Hopital's rule because we cannot differentiate factorial yet. We don't have the gamma function yet, okay? But the good thing is that we don't need to use the L'Hopital's rule. We can just use the definition of factorial and also the positive whole number exponent and also what we call the squeeze theorem. I will show you guys how to do this more rigorously this time. Okay, here we go. In order for us to use the squeeze theorem, we have to come up with a lower bound for this and also upper bound for that, right? So first, let's observe n factorial over n to the nth power. We know this is always non-negative, right? So here is the first observation. Let me just put this down. We know that I can say this is 0 less than or equal to n factorial over n to the nth power. And we'll read this as n factorial over n to the nth power, it's always greater than or equal to 0, right? And this should be pretty clear. This is true for all n. And if you want to make this even more rigorous, of course, you have to use the mathematical induction. And I think I'll cover that sometime soon in the future. Anyway, that's the first observation, and this is going to be our lower bound. So the strategy is, if I can come with an upper bound that we know much better, I will just push the upper bound, squeeze this in between, and then maybe hopefully push this towards zero, right? That's the deal. Here is where the definition of the factorial and then also the positive whole number power comes in. Let's take a look of n factorial over n to the nth power. So as a reminder, what does factorial mean? If you look at 5 factorial, we start with 5 and then just go down all the way till 1 and you multiply out all these numbers. So when we have n factorial, we begin by saying we have n times the next number which is going to be n minus 1 and likewise keep going n minus 2 and then dot dot dot. At the end, you finish this with multiply by 3, multiply by 2, multiply by 1, right? How many factors do we have? We will have a total of and factors, right? Just like this, 5 factorial, we will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 factors. Now let's look at the denominator, namely this is n to the nth power. And of course, right here I can write this down, 5 to the 5th power. This means like this, and you multiply them all together, right? So we have to write down the base n, n times, and multiply them together. So we have n, and because we will have the same amount of factors on the top and on the bottom. So let me put down m match with the first n on the top like this, and then second n match with this, and then the third n, and then so on, so on, so on, and then this and that. And they can all pair up nicely, all right? Because we have a total of n factors on the bottom as well. And now, of course, we have a huge fraction bar, but it's okay to just say it's fraction here, and then divide it by this, divide by this, and so on, right? Because each factor, they are just multiplying anyway. So you can just look at this, 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 that, and multiply. Okay, so here is the inequality part that comes in. We know n over n is just 1. That's okay. And look at this part, n minus 1 over n. This is always going to be less than or equal to 1. And you can put on less than if you want, like, but we should, you know, the technical part is to put on the equal sign as well. But anyway, this right here, it's 1, but I can also write that as less than or equal to 1. And this right here is also less than or equal to 1 because the numerator, once again, is smaller than the bottom, and so on, right? And lastly, you see, we have 2 over n. This is, of course, less than or equal to 1. And because we're talking about n is going to infinity, 
of course, n has to be much bigger than 2. So here is the deal. We will say this expression is going to be less than or equal to, we have the first one right here, and then another one, and then another one, and so on, so on, so on. And then let me put down one more one right here. But lastly, I would like to keep this as how it is, 1 over n. And the reason I don't want to write this down as 1 is because if I have n factorial over n to the n is less than or equal to 1, I am talking about 0 and 1, and this is in the middle. And this can be going to anywhere, somewhere in between of 0 and 1. That's not good. I'm going to look at the last factor, 1 over as how it is, and then take the limit for that, right? So anyway, you see this right here is just pretty much the same as 1 over n. In another word, I'm saying n factorial over n to the n is less than or equal to 1 over n, because it's 1 times 1, and blah 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 times 1 over n, right? So that's the second observation. Along with the first one, I can say n factorial over n to the n, it's in between of 0 and 1 over n. In between of 0 and 1 over n, so I'll grade it down like this, right? So this is what we have from the first and also the second observation. Thus, we have that. And now, this is in the middle of this. I can take the limit individually. This is the limit as n goes to infinity, the limit as n goes to infinity, and of course, the limit as n goes to infinity. And now we know this much, much better, because the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, this goes to 0. So, what we're saying is, 0 is in between of, I don't know why I'm using blue, but it's okay. I think I have been using blue in my videos anyway. <laughs> right? So, you see that? This, which is what we're trying to find out originally, we have 0 on the left, 0 on the right, and this is a you know, in-between situation, including, including, right? That means this guy has to be 0 as well. So finally, we'll say the limit, it has to be equal to 0. And now let's be fancy, just like in your, es <laughs> in your, in your uh, English essay or your research paper, you have to do the citation, right? Right here, we are saying this is equal to 0. We also have to quote, the, have to do the citation as well. Quote the theorem by the squeeze theorem. And this right here is it. However, before we go, let me first tell you guys what we can get out of this computation. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of the ratio n factorial and n to the nth power. And then we end up with 0, right? And this will tell us that the top it's smaller than the bottom. And you may be wondering how small it's small. Well, the top is really, really small in comparison with the bottom one. That's why when you take the limit as n goes to infinity, we end up with 0, right? So in notation, I can tell you, we can say the top, which is the n factorial in our situation. n factorial is not just smaller than n to the n, but it's a lot, a lot, a lot smaller than n to the n. So we can write it down as smaller than, smaller than, like less than, less than, n to the n, right? So if you put this down on the top and put this down on the bottom and take the limit, you get zero for it. And with this being said, let me tell you guys the list. And remember, I have been telling you guys we have our best friend and we also have the fact. And here is the list. And this is going to be really useful when you are talking about sequences, right? And oftentimes, We'll be interested in the limit as n goes to infinity, and we want to compare different kinds of infinity from different kinds of sequence, right? So among all the sequence that approaches to infinity, the smallest one that we'll get is ln n, right? So this is the smallest kind, and then the next one is going to be x, well, n to some power. Well, I'm talking about sequence, so I have to use n. And I will once again write it as that notation. So this is less than less than n to some power. I will just put down p right here. We have to come back to, to say what does the p equal to, right? And then the next one is going to be the exponential situation. I will write it down as b raised to the nth power, n in the exponent. And here comes the factorial. So in fact, factorial beats the exponential, right? Or the geometric sequence up to you, right? This is n factorial. Lastly, we have n to the n. So this is the list. And to complete this, 
here, the P has to be a path the exponent, right? And likewise here, the B, you also have to know that this right here, it has to actually be greater than 1, right? And of course, you can have the combination or the compositions of forever, forever. You may have like n factorial and square, right? n factorial and then you square that. But in that case, of course, you have to just do even more work for that. But this is usually what I call the list to be. You can just make a quick comparison when you want to figure out a limit real quick. Anyway, that's it.